So we've seen examples on what to do with an integral involving tangents and secants. If we have a if we have an even number of secants, it's pretty okay. If we have an odd number of tangents and we can afford to give up one secant, we're also going to be okay. But I want to explore some situations where it's not as simple, certainly doable. Like if you look at this integral right here, take the integral of tangent cubed. Um, the problem here is we have an odd number of tangents, but we don't even have a single secant to offer up for our du, right? We might want to say du equals secant tangent, but we don't have a secant to do it. So that doesn't work. And also we do have an even number of secants, there's zero, but we need at least two to do the u substitution. So it's, u substitution doesn't really work in this situation. Um, so what can we do? So in this situation, we have a tangent cubed and no secants whatsoever. Uh, we're going to try to do some type of reduction technique. That is, we're going to kick the can down the road from tangent cubed into something else. For this to work, we're going to have to remember what is the antiderivative of tangent, which we have done before. Uh, click the video link you see right now to see the derivation of this antiderivative here. But we've seen before that the antiderivative of tangent x is the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus, co plus a constant. We're going to utilize that, and the basic derivation of that comes from the fact that tangent is sine over cosine. You could try to make that substitution right here, but uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to try a simpler approach. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this up because we still do know, I mean, it is still a fact that uh, one plus tangent equals secant squared or more importantly, tangent squared equals secant squared x minus one. So what we're gonna do is in order to reduce a tangent to higher powers, we're gonna borrow two of the tangents and switch those tangents into a secant squared minus one. So doing that, we're gonna rewrite this. We borrow one of the tangents and then, like I said, the other tangent squared, we're going to reduce it using, well, we're going to substitute using the Pythagorean identity. So if we do that, we get a tangent x. We're going to get a secant squared x minus 1 dx. And now you're going to distribute the tangent across this difference right here. On the first one, you end up with a tangent x secant squared x dx. And on the second one, you're going to end up with a tangent x dx, like so. Now, for the first one, because you have a tangent and a secant together now, you could try to do u equals secant, uh, du equals tangent secant. You also, in fact, could work with du being secant squared, if you prefer. The point is, because you have tangents and secants together, there is a possibility of doing some u substitution on the first integral. And in fact, we've already done uh, this integral. I'm not going to do it again, uh, but we saw previously that this first integral becomes one half tangent squared x uh, plus a constant. Uh, we, we, we don't need that constant here right now uh, because we'll just stack it at the very end of this integral. There it is. Uh, and then we have to do this negative tangent of x, right? And like I said above, the antiderivative of tangent of x is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of secant x. Clearly, I didn't need so much space between my plus c there, but there she blows. We have it. Uh, and so what we see here is this really nice trick of reduction of tangents. If you have a power of tangent, regretting putting the plus c so far out there if you have a power of tangent like so here we had like uh, a tangent cubed but this technique would also work if you have tangent to the fourth tangent to the fifth tangent squared ta tangent to the 5280 power this idea is we can reduce the tangent downs uh, we can reduce it using uh, this identity right here Re replace two of the tangents with the secant squared minus one distribute the remaining tangents You'll then have a tangent and a secant squared for which you can do a u substitution. It'll be just fine. And uh, then you'll have a, a fewer tangents left behind. So like, again, if we did something like take tangent to the 17th of x dx, what you do is you replace this with tangent to the 15th times secant squared x minus one dx. You distribute on the first integral you would have this tangent to the 15th secant squared d uh, secant squared x dx minus a tangent 
to the 15th dx. So notice here what happens is for the first one, you can do get away with a u substitution. u equals tangent, du equals secant squared dx, in which case that one's not too hard to do. It'll just be a power function. And now here, you just have one, uh, you have two less tangents than you had before. So we reduce the power down. And so this process would eventually terminate. It takes several steps. I'm not going to give you one with this big of a power. But this demonstrates that we can always reduce down powers of tangent. So even if you have no secants available, we can always artificially insert secants into the problem using the Pythagorean identity. And then we, reduct, we reduce using some type of uh, induction argument to finish up this antiderivative.